family. I've had a question on my mind this week. Maybe a little over a week, but it's, it's a question that I feel like it should be a very simple one. It should be one that's very easy to answer. And yet the more thought that I put into it, the less of an answer I have. The question that I've had on my mind this week is, am I living today like Jesus is alive? Am I living today like Jesus is alive? Now, the Sunday school answer to that question is simple. It's yes. I know that Jesus is alive. His resurrection is the reason that, that I'm able to, to be in community with the Father. His resurrection is the reason I'm able to be in community with Him. I'm able to, to talk to Him, and I'm able to, to share and to walk through life with Him. His resurrection is the reason that the Holy Spirit is a part of my life as well. And so the Sunday school answer the easy answer is, am I living like Jesus is alive, is yes. But then I start thinking, am I really living like Jesus is alive? In John 21, we read an account where the disciples are faced with a very, very similar situation, where the disciples are, are faced with the exact same question of what to do, how to live once Jesus is alive. In John 21, we see Peter um, one day, he, he's in a moment of, of uncertainty. Um, Jesus has appeared to all the disciples. He's appeared to some ladies. Um, people have seen him around and alive. And he's told the disciples, hey, don't, don't go anywhere. Don't, don't leave town until you receive the Holy Spirit. And so in this, in this period of waiting, of knowing that eventually I'll be able to return to my life. Eventually I'll be able to do something again. But for right now, I'm not really sure what I need to do. In this moment, Peter does something that, that I think a lot of, a lot of us would, would understand, we could relate to. Peter looks at the other disciples and he says, well, I'm going fishing. Now, for those of us that are, that are fishermen, we think, oh, this is a wonderful idea. For those of us that love to fish, it's like, this is great. Spending time around the water, spending time around that is a wonderful thing. My question is, is why did Peter go back fishing? Why did he go fishing? The account continues that the disciples, that there's several of them that go with him. And so as they go out in the boat and they've, they've fished for a while and they've caught nothing, that as they're getting closer to the shore, a, a very common question for those of us that go fishing, um, is said, a man on the shore, he, he calls out and he says, hey, did you catch anything? And the disciples, you know, I, I can imagine they probably, you know, kind of bowed their head and no, we really haven't caught anything. And he says, then cast your net to the other side of the boat. And I believe that these words began to, to, to ring a bell for some of the disciples. I believe that some of the disciples began to say, hey, wait a minute, I've heard this before. I've experienced this before. Why is this familiar? And it's familiar because a lot of them had experienced this exact thing. Jesus had found them before he knew them, before they had a relationship. He had found them in the exact same situation, in the exact same place. And so when he told them to cast the net to the other side, one of the disciples, he calls out and he's like, hey, I think that's Jesus. And it says that immediately Peter, he, he, he takes off his robe, he jumps out of the boat, and he swims to shore, and he goes to find Jesus where he's at. He goes to, to be with his friend. He goes to talk to his friend. He, he goes to return, um, maybe because he had something he needed to say, maybe because he had something that he needed to, to talk about. But as he, as he goes and he returns, um, we see the scene, and it's this beautiful picture where Jesus, he asks Simon Peter three different times whether he loves him or not, and three different times, some Peter is able to affirm, Jesus, of course I love you. Of course I love you. Yes, I love you. And this is, this is important because it was three times that he denied Jesus. So I don't think it's a coincidence that he's able to three times tell Jesus that he loves him as well. And so then as Peter is faced with a similar situ situation to what, to what we face today, as he's faced with a similar question of what we have today, well, Jesus, what am I supposed to do? Like, how does this whole thing go? And Jesus tells him two, two words. Two words to answer the question of what do I do when I don't know what to do? What do I do in the future? What do I do as a next step? 
Maybe even what do I do right now? The words are found in verse 19. Jesus looks at Simon Peter and he says, follow me. And that's a very, very simple statement. It's, it's very, very simple words, but the meaning behind them is so massive. And it's so important for us to understand today because I think a lot of us are, are very similar to Simon Peter. We're in this time where we really don't know what to do. We know that in the future, sometime in the future, we're going to be able to return to, to what a somewhat consistent life. I won't say normal life because I don't know that we want to go back to normal life, but, but a consistent life of, of something where, where maybe we can understand and we can move about freely and we can do some things differently. We see that it's coming. And for some of us, we see that it's coming very soon. But it's not there yet. And so in the meantime, when I don't know what really I can do today, what do I do? And I think some of us have done exactly like the disciples. We've, we've returned to what we knew before. I don't think there's anything wrong with, with binging Netflix. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing puzzles. I don't think there's anything wrong with, with going for hikes and runs and, and all these things that we're doing. I don't, I don't think any of that stuff is bad. My question is, what are we doing today to follow Jesus? Because it didn't get a pause button. Peter, Peter didn't have a time where it's like, well, you don't really know what to do, so it's fine to just do whatever. No, Peter was given the assignment that right now, when things are uncertain, when you really can't go and do what you know will happen in the future, you're supposed to follow me. And then when you get to that point in the future where you do know what you can do, you're supposed to follow me. And I wonder if some of us have, have kind of put the pause button on our faith. If we've said, you know, I can't go to church. I can't meet with my community group except for through Zoom. I can't do all of these things. And so for the moment, I've just, I've taken a step back and I've said, hey, then I'll just pause and, and I'll return to it one day. And I think that our faith is, is, is kind of stagnant. It's stopped. It's not growing. It's not doing anything. And I think that if we were able to, to stand before Jesus today, maybe if we were on the, the, the shore, just us and him, and Jesus has seen what we've done over the past few weeks, and he's seen what we've done over the past month or two, he, he knows what's about to happen in the future just a little bit. And we were to look to him and we were to say, hey, Jesus, well, well, what am I supposed to be doing right now? I think Jesus would have the same two words. You're supposed to follow me. And that looks different for everyone. That looks different for each one of us, not just, not just for like our spiritual life, but on a day-to-day -day basis. Because following Jesus um, is so dynamic. It's so massive. Because there's so many things that we can do that show that we follow Jesus. And so I think that if we ask ourselves the question, Am I living today like Jesus is alive? We believe he's alive. We know he's alive. We know that he rose from the dead. If the answer to that question is yes, then I think the follow-up question is like, then how am I following him today? Because I don't think we get a pause button, a break. I think all of us have it sometimes. I think all of us get it sometimes. But I think just like that day on the shore, maybe this is a wake-up call. Today, we follow Jesus. Tomorrow, we follow Jesus. And then one day, when we can all meet in church again, as, a, as this massive community of believers, and we can worship, and we can listen to, to Pastor Marty preach, and we can go to our small groups, and we can hug <laughs> and not elbow, I think then it'll, it'll, it'll all be different. But the same words will be there. In those days, it still follow Jesus. So today, are you living like Jesus is alive? And if so, then follow him. I love you guys.